The great conflict of the ages is about to intensify. But remember the words of Jesus. In me, ye may have peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Would you like to know how to exercise courage and fight the good fight of faith? Listen to this devotional. Conflict and Courage, a daily devotional by Ellen G. White. Satan's Stealthy Work For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6 verse 12 The Bible has little to say in praise of men. Little space is given to recounting the virtues of even the best men who have ever lived. This silence is not without purpose. It is not without a lesson. All the good qualities that men possess are the gift of God. Their good deeds are performed by the grace of God through Christ. Since they owe all to God, the glory of whatever they are or do belongs to him alone. They are but instruments in his hands. More than this, as all the lessons of Bible history teach, it is a perilous thing to praise or exalt men. For if one comes to lose sight of his entire dependence on God and to trust to his own strength, he is sure to fall. It is impossible for us in our own strength to maintain the conflict and whatever diverts the mind from God, whatever leads to self-exaltation or to self-dependence is surely preparing the way for our overthrow. The tenor of the Bible is to incalculate distrust of human power and to encourage trust in divine power. It was the spirit of self-confidence and self-exaltation that prepared the way for David's fall. Flattery and the subtle allurements of power and luxury were not without effect upon him. Intercourse with surrounding nations also exerted an influence for evil. According to the customs prevailing among Eastern rulers, crimes not to be tolerated in subjects were uncondemned in the king. The monarch was not under obligation to exercise the same self-restraint as the subject. All this tended to lessen David's sense of the exceeding sinfulness of sin, and instead of relying in humility upon the power of Jehovah, he began to trust in his own wisdom and might. As soon as Satan can separate the soul from God, the only source of strength, he will seek to arouse the unholy desires of man's carnal nature. The work of the enemy is not abrupt. It is not at the outset sudden and startling. It is a secret undermining of the strongholds of principle.